Okay, welcome again, everybody. And thank you so much again for joining. Appreciate you all making the time to join us today. Happy to welcome our Vice President, Jory Weissman on this session with us as well. In addition to being a partner at MyBar, Jory is also a software consulting expert with over 30 years of experience in mid-market business automation. And in case that wasn't keeping him busy enough, he is also the chief analyst at the Business Software Education Center, which is an educational platform focused on providing critical information on business software technology and digital transformation for business leaders like yourselves. So without further ado, I will pass it to Jory to take us away. Hey, thank you, Maria. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your day to join us for our Lunch and Learn as we take a quick look at the mid-market computing landscape in general and specifically at Acumatica. And we'll see why they have become one of the most exciting cloud solution providers out there and really how they've been helping accelerate business transformation with both process and cost efficiencies. During our session, you'll get some insight into what your peers are thinking and doing as it relates to cloud computing. And of course, enjoy a good lunch while supporting your local restaurants in the process. I hope everybody did take advantage of that. Now, as long as my neighbor stops mowing his lawn and we don't get interrupted, I'm looking forward to proceeding with, with our agenda. So we're gonna look at uh, cloud enablement, specifically what some of the key drivers have been and what has been uh, moving organizations forward uh, in rapid cloud adoption. Uh, we're gonna look at the trend that has taken place over the past seven to 10 years, and of course, recent events that have really helped to accelerate that. As part of that, we're also gonna be taking a look at the Business Software Education uh, Center 2020 uh, Technology Outlook Sentiment Study that we sponsored. Um, I think it'll give you some great insight into what your peers are thinking, um, where they're focusing their energies and uh, how they're adapting uh, new technology. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, we'll be looking at some of the traditional barriers to cloud adoption in the SMB market space. Um, while the acceleration rate is significant, um, adoption is uh, nowhere near uh, you know, 100% by any stretch. So uh, we'll look at what uh, some of the factors are that are preventing that from happening. And then, of course, we'll look at how Acumatica is addressing the needs of the modern business. Uh, they've done an excellent job in pulling this all together, and we'll take a nice deep dive into their software. So I thought it was important to think about uh, cloud computing and what's referred to as digital transformation and really take a, a step back because digital transformation is defined really as the use of new, fast, and frequently changing digital technology to help solve problems. One of the examples of digital transformation is cloud computing. It reduces the reliance on user-owned hardware and increases reliance on subscription-based cloud services. Uh, and it, it really takes the form of, of two areas, what we'll call infrastructure as a service and software as a service. And we're gonna take a look now at what the, uh, uh, the key drivers are and why it has become mission critical. So the first thing we think about here is about scalability and elasticity. And that really applies to both SaaS and infrastructure as a service. Obviously, providing infinite power, supporting rapid change, that's, that's pretty much a given. Uh, but really, the key thing is about the elasticity to scale the utilization up and down as, as the need arises. Uh, being able to take advantage of that in a cost-efficient way is really at the, the life's flood of this. And it has become uh, really important for smaller businesses to be able to leverage this technology uh, because it's providing computing power uh, that has never before been available, and it's really democratized uh, the level of, of, of access to this computing power. So with reducing costs and increasing power, people could take advantage of that. One of the things that come to mind, one of the most popular applications that is out there, uh, something called business intelligence. We work at a solution called Microsoft Power BI. And so now gone are the days where expensive data warehouses and huge infrastructure investments need to be put in place, effectively replaced by a $10 per month subscription to Microsoft. Uh, and you can see why this is really taking off. The other thing we think about is high availability and redundancy and failover. I know of the many things that keep small business owners up at night is making sure that the servers are not only well backed up, but are they highly available? Meaning if something were to happen in my environment through outside attack or through hardware failure, what is my time to recovery? And, and certainly the cloud providers, uh, Acumatic in particular, when it comes to software and service, 
uh, is, is providing tremendous uh, acceleration to your ability to recover uh, from, from these potential nightmares. Um, of course, uh, accessibility is also a key thing. Being able to access the information without significant infrastructure investment is also key. And of course, with events of today, uh, having that increase in the remote workforce is, is driving the need uh, for cloud adoption and uh, as it relates to accessibility. And, and the other key thing as we think about when it comes predominantly to software, but really for both platform and software, is being always current. And I know when we talk to people about potentially updating their business systems, one of the very first questions we ask is, what version are you on? What version of your software? What version of your database? What version of your operating systems? Myriad of questions that have to be thought about and balanced uh, when, when contemplating an upgrade. Um, and uh, the philosophy today is that potentially this could be your very last upgrade. That once you get on board with it, with a good cloud-based business management solution, the thought of upgrades really go out the window as they, they do self-upgrade. The other thing people think about, obviously, data security, cybersecurity, and compliance. As business owners are doing more with their software, uh, things like credit card processing and electronic banking and storing more information about your clients and vendors, uh, compliance really becomes a key to uh, being able, again, to sleep at night. Uh, making sure that PCA compliance, when it has to do with credit card management, um, and of course, cybersecurity, we all know that there's threats are continual. We'll take a, a look at that a little bit later on in the presentation. Uh, but certainly people like Microsoft and their Azure platform and Amazon Web Services with the, as the hosting platform for Acumatica have the right security standards uh, far better than you're going to be able to achieve uh, at far lower cost, certainly, than you'll be able to achieve uh, on-prem. And that really strikes to the total cost of ownership. Um, and I put a little asterisk there because I think a bit later on we're going to focus on uh, what really is implied within the total cost of ownership uh, because a lot of times business owners would have left business systems upgraded every five or seven years and not had the ability to enjoy interim updates. And not only does that pose a security risk and a compliance risk, but certainly there's a loss of productivity there. So let's take a deeper dive into total cost of ownership. You see, there's really a lot going on today uh, that's, that's driving the need for it. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, what we wanted to do is we set out at the Business Software Education Center uh, to really get a sentiment study done so that we can understand what business owners like you are thinking about. And in that process, we actually had interviews conducted with over a thousand business executives across the country uh, in all industries um, and, and really tried to segment in as you'll look at how uh, we, we kind of stratified these organizations. Uh, over uh, two thirds uh, are small and mid-sized organizations. So really a good representative sample of the people in attendance today. We also interviewed uh, a lot of larger scale organizations to get their perspective because obviously where they're trending is where we want to trend. And the things that they're looking, about is, looking at is where we want to go relative to our technology. And we asked them, what technology and strategic initiatives are you planning on implementing? And uh, as you see the breakout here, number one, top of the list, is business intelligence, analytics, integrated dashboards, advanced reporting. Really moving the information to the business decision makers is leading the field. Obviously, as we talked about earlier, cloud enables that at a, at a much higher level than ever before, certainly greater than, than, than the on-premise solutions would, would afford. Um, and of course, overall cloud adoption and migration, cybersecurity, and not left behind is the business software initiative to upgrade the business applications to the standards of today. And we'll be looking at Acumatic and what they've been doing in the area of cross-module connectivity and workflow capabilities, all resulting in an overall transformation of their digital footprint. We also asked them, do you plan to increase or decrease your company's investment in the aforementioned technologies? And what's, what's amazing here is that 55% of the company surveyed plan to increase what is already record spend. So if you combine the same investment of 29 and 55%, you have like 84% of the respondents are going to stay at this accelerated level or increase their level of spend on these technologies. Um, and, and that's because they know that in order to stay competitive, they can no longer leave their business uh, infrastructure and software technology investments as background. They really are moving to the forefront of the business and, and certainly the spend is, is indicative of that. And then we just asked a general question we defined earlier with digital transformation is 64% uh, 
of the organizations surveyed are on a journey towards digital transformation, aka using modern cloud-based technologies to facilitate that. But the need for cloud has certainly accelerated and accelerated significantly with the events of today. Um, certainly the COVID effect uh, has, has taken, taken its, its toll on businesses in, in more ways than one, but certainly from a, a technology perspective, it's put a tremendous strain on technology resources, uh, infrastructure, network security, and cybersecurity. Um, and as an organization who provides infrastructure services to many of our clients, uh, some of you are online with us today, um, we know that there was significant things that had to be put in place to make sure that your users were able to access the systems, that you had the server infrastructure, security in place uh, to be able to manage uh, uh, your, your remote workforce. And, and truth be told, even prior to this, there were increasing numbers of remote workers uh, trying to access systems to begin with. Uh, this just really exacerbated the issue. And I'll focus a little bit more on the area of cybersecurity. And uh, according to Google, there were 18 million daily COVID-19 related malware and phishing email attempts out there. And so we know that the, the biggest vector or the most vulnerable vector is your, your users allowing uh, just giving up passwords and giving access into the system. So as much as the IT team can secure your infrastructure, it's really up to the users to maintain vigilance in what they're doing. And the phishing term COVID-19 was actually the number one phishing phrase. So just as a cautionary note, I think that's important. Uh, but it's certainly, if we think about moving to the cloud and having a remote workforce and having increased uh, security measures in place, you're going to be better served in the cloud than, than on-prem. Uh, in, in all cases. Um, so then we decided to take a look at what are some of the barriers to the cloud in, in the SMB market space. And really it's a matter of battle between the perception and the reality. Um, and so one of the key perceptions that we've encountered, I've personally encountered is people think about moving their business to the cloud for the first time is loss of control and autonomy that I'm gonna put my data up into the cloud and, I'm, and somebody else is gonna have access to it. I'm gonna lose my private, uh, privacy or the government is gonna have access uh, to my information um, and I'm somehow less secure uh, than it is sitting within my own environment. Well, we all know the reality of that is that cloud-based systems empirically pose a far lower risk uh, to security and, 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 and data intrusion in spite of, you know, certainly the large scale issues you hear about with Target and other organizations. Uh, the facts are uh, that Amazon Web Services and, and Microsoft Azure um, have a level of uh, professional monitoring uh, that just cannot be even remotely touched, um, you know, as compared to something that's on-prem. And then, of course, there's a function of availability and downtime. The reality is that the mean time between failures is lower on, on, on the web than it is uh, on-prem, and your time to recovery is significantly faster. Um, so with those things considered, that perception really doesn't match the reality. Um, also, um, according to survey, uh, people believe it's somehow going to have a loss of 24-7 availability that I just don't have access to the internet or my circuit goes down. But knowing things are available with optimized access from any device at any time, uh, certainly being able to get access to your information is, uh, is certainly not less available in the cloud. And we'll talk a little bit uh, later on about how Acumatica in particular is uh, addressing these concerns of the small business owner. So they are listening and they have a very unique uh, solution in place to be able to facilitate that unlike, unlike some of the others in the, in the market. And then of course the perception is one of increased cost that the only people getting uh, rich off of this are the software companies that are renting their software as opposed to uh, allowing you to purchase it on a traditional perpetual license. But the reality of it is that there is an absolute lower cost uh, of, of, of ownership, a lower, lower TCO as we call it, total cost of ownership, uh, because there are many hidden costs in implementing legacy systems. Right? There's the cost of the, of the upgrade, as we talked about, is hardware and software and operating systems. There's also a lost opportunity cost of standing still, right? Because if you've upgraded every five to seven years, there's a whole lot of advancement in the technology that you're not able to take advantage of. Um, and uh, that, that has a real cost, especially as, as quickly as things are moving today. Uh, and of course, there's the cost of increased downtime, as we cited before, the time between failures and, and the time to recovery is, is, is certainly much, much faster in the cloud. Um, and there's also the direct cost of legacy, right? The, the cost of growth in infrastructure is significant. 
uh, you know, putting in that server, it's going to be there for a while, and you're going to make a significant investment. Um, and of course, with cloud and with the Acumatica user license model, being able to expand or contract as you need to gives you that flexibility or what we call elasticity uh, to be able to really move in, in a much more agile way. So uh, these are some, some important considerations. So as we turn our attention over to Acumatica, we're seeing how they really work to address these things. Number one, they, they focus on what they call the connected business. You'll see later on how CRM and other aspects of the business management software suite are connected from manufacturing to inventory to order processing uh, and, and the analytics, um, as well as rapid integrations where you're able to connect uh, to other uh, web-based applications with much greater ease. In fact, they lead the, the field in, uh, in, in their API structure. They actually have an entire API layer uh, that enables integrations to take place uh, quickly and, and more easily. Um, remote collaboration, we'll see some examples of that, how the entire team can really be on the same page and have a, a personalized experience with respect to how they use the software and how they connect with one another. Um, certainly business resilience, we've talked about redundancy and failover um, and, and being able to guarantee more uptime and uh, future proofing the business. As I mentioned before, let this be the last upgrade your business ever needs to do and be able to take advantage of those upgrades as Acumatica releases them every six months, um, which was really, for me, that was when I saw that and coming from a legacy uh, on-prem world, uh, seeing how this really comes to life and you're able to take advantage of these upgrades, uh, it's certainly a, a game changer. So we talked a little bit about some of the fears, right? And people have a concern about who's got my data and I'm a little concerned about putting that data up into the cloud. So what Acumatica did to address that, they've given you two deployment options. You can put it up in the public cloud on, on AWS, which is their preferred host. So about 80% or actually a little bit more, maybe even closer to 85% of their license uh, sales are, are coming into the public cloud where they're providing the software as a service and the infrastructure back end. One monthly fee and, and you have access to it. Alternatively, there are some organizations, whether you're in banking or healthcare, or you have some strict compliance standards that for whatever reason you need to maintain it in your own private data center, you can subscribe to their software uh, at a bit of a lower cost and deploy it on an infrastructure of your choosing. I even have some customers who want the advantage of this type of software solution, but want to keep it on-prem. And so they make a subscription uh, to the software and, and they host it internally. Although that is a, a shrinking part of, of, of their business model. And uh, I suspect uh, over time, it, it'll be not, not very often used. Um, and one of the key things I think at inception that made Acumatica a, a good bet, certainly from my bar to invest our, our efforts in, in, in bringing it to market, um, and which we know is a very demanding market, aside from the amazing functionality they bring to the table, their alliances were pretty important to us. Uh, they built everything on the entire Microsoft stack. It's fully integrated with Office 365 and Power BI, and certainly optimized to run on the Azure platform if you choose. Alternatively, as we mentioned, They've got a relationship established with Amazon doing their multi-tenant hosting um, and uh, using uh, various other Amazon web-based technologies as we'll, we'll see in a few moments. Uh, so they, they, they really aligned themselves quite well uh, with, with the leaders in the space. What they've also done is they've created an environment of great connectivity. We talked about their API structure and they have out of the box integrations with some of the leading e-commerce providers and many, many others. And this is just a representation of, of, of two of some of the larger ones, uh, but with Office 365 and Salesforce, they have an Amazon Alexa integration, uh, DocuSign and Power BI as we talked about and tax engines and marketing. So these are out of the box uh, integrations that are available uh, that are built in and there are a facility for scores of others uh, to, be, to be introduced and, and there are scores of others that are in their ecosystem uh, today. The other key thing is about accessibility. So what they're doing to address that is making it available on any device at any time, whether you're running it on your desktop on, on Chrome or, uh, or Internet Explorer or Firefox or uh, your uh, PDA. Uh, smartphone uh, on uh, iPhone or, or Android operating system and they even have natural language recognition uh, with Amazon Alexa where you can literally ask 
Alexa, what were my sales today? And it's going to recite to you those important business metrics. So making the data accessible, making the data consumable and always available uh, is really a key. And, and really that's where they're gonna focus uh, the future on making it just really easy to use. The other thing that they've done is they've created a very modern and growth friendly, friendly licensing model. Much like the cloud itself, they've gone away from the per user license model that dominates the perpetual landscape or still some other cloud players uh, work on that, on, on that uh, paradigm of, of pricing. Uh, what they do here is they use a consumption based pricing model. So they don't care if you have 10 or 15 users accessing the software or 50 users accessing the software. Um, they wanna get all employees in the pool and being able to gain access to the information they need when they need it. And what they're basing their pricing on is how much of their processing engine and power are you using? And it really makes a whole lot of sense, right? If you're scaling up, whether you're using three or 4,000 transactions per month or 15 or 20,000 transactions per month, that's really how they'll scale their pricing. So as your business conditions change, so does your pricing model move. And they even have things to help you address seasonality and seasonal, uh, seasonal upticks in, in the consumption of their, of their resources. The other thing that they've done is they've made deep uh, specialization into certain vertical industries. We know, uh, you know through our experience, we've worked with field services, we've worked with commerce enabled organizations, construction, distribution and manufacturing. That is a true cross section of where MyBar's expertise is. And they have deep and cross-functional capabilities. So very often today we have manufacturers who are doing field services. We have distributors who are doing field services and having all of these pieces working together. So even though they have specific industry additions, they also take advantage of these connected cross-module workflows that incorporate project management and financial management, inventory and CRM to all of those other capabilities. At the end of the day, your lead to cash process and the delivery of your services, whether you're picking and packing and shipping, or whether you're manufacturing and picking and packing and shipping, um, uh, are all part of one interconnected set of workflows uh, that we'll take some time to look at. And it's not just my bar that's saying it, right? We've, we've done a lot of research. And like I said, we could have aligned ourselves with a lot of different software companies and have over the years. We chose to work with Acumatica uh, because we saw real depth of functionality and the commitment of management and how they're moving the, uh, their business forward and how they're moving the technology forward in really smart ways. Uh, but uh, Acumatica is also named the best cloud ERP solution, the best manufacturing solution, and the best overall ERP solution, if you think about that. And that's from the Cody Awards, which is like the Academy Awards of, of the software industry. Um, uh, not quite as glamorous, certainly, but uh, uh, certainly uh, no, no less significant. Um, and of course, PC Magazine and Editor's Choice as well. Um, they're also on the radar of Gartner, which is one of the industry leaders in terms of survey. And They've got now over 6,500 customers worldwide and growing. And this was really the key thing that I wanted to show as it relates to where they're positioned. Nucleus Research, which is one of the biggest research uh, organizations in the world, especially focused in ERP uh, landscape, ranks Acumatica number one in usability. If we look at that, right? Uh, and of course, from a functionality perspective, they are you know, solidly within that magic quadrant and moving in the proper direction. Uh, uh, in, in terms of extending the reach and the functionality and what they've done with field services and manufacturing will certainly extend this beyond. And the other one that I think is really important is the emotional footprint. Specifically, what do the users think about the software that they're interacting with, right? And, and getting users emotionally connected to a piece of software is important because it fosters greater adoption and greater use, helps them to overcome challenges and issues uh, because they just like the interface and what they're working with. If you look at where Acumatica ranks, really the leadership in value and, um, and emotional response to it. And uh, this Oracle ERP is, by the way, their enterprise ERP. This is not NetSuite, which is somewhere down here. And some of the other Microsoft Dynamics solutions uh, are, are really sitting in more of a laggard position relative to where they're positioning themselves here. And these, we think these are important, right, in terms of greater usability and do people really like the software? Um, and, and that's something really only end users can dictate, not analysts. The other thing is they have a 97% support satisfaction rate 
Um, I'm not quite sure what their net promoter score is really indicative of, but what I can tell you is that they spend a lot of time making sure that their clients are happy. They spend a lot of time with us as a reseller, and on an annualized basis, they're gonna communicate with you as the consumer to make sure that you're satisfied with their product, uh, make sure you're satisfied with the job that MyBar has done implementing that product. Um, and uh, we've actually have uh, or people within our organization that are solely dedicated to maintaining a relationship with our clients after use of the software, after implementation of the software, so we can stay connected and really plugged into what you guys are thinking and feeling about, about the use of the software. So um, that is, uh, concludes the first part of our, of our presentation. Just gonna take a little bit of a quick shift over here as I get into the software, because I know everybody's gonna wanna take a look and see what's happening in the world of Acumatica. And just um, wanna point out if there's uh, any, any questions, you can use your chat feature. And we have a lot of people in attendance today, so um, uh, not able to communicate with each other, but uh, we will uh, respond to those questions and, and certainly set a follow-up uh, session with you. Bear with me. May just have to log back in, but uh, welcome to Acumatica. As you can see, Acumatica is running in a browser. I have several different tabs that are open, and I wanted to come into this particular dashboard describing distribution flow, because I think it'll help us identify uh, certain key processing characteristics uh, about the software. I'm just gonna take a sip of water. So I don't sound like I got a frog. <clears throat> Excuse me, thank you. And so um, one of the things that I'm gonna focus on here is looking at things like replenishment and looking at things, you know, obviously order processing is going to be important, uh, but, and, and having multiple warehouse capabilities is going to be important, but it's the nuance of the processing and how these things are all integrated with one another. So I'm gonna take a quick dive into uh, the, the warehouse and I'm just, I timed out here from a security standpoint, so I'm just gonna log back in. Let's take a moment. And this will launch the program and what I wanted to show. And you know, certainly inventory is a great touchstone that I think every organization can focus in on, right? So whether you're in a field services business that's installing product or you're a distributor or an importer or a manufacturer, having a solid robust inventory management system is going to be important. The key thing we wanna focus on here is that it can run across multiple warehouses, right? That it has the capabilities of maintaining locational control. You don't need a separate warehouse management solution to support uh, the uh, location control within Acumatica. Um, there's infinite number of locations that can be defined and also establishing PIC priorities. So they've got now an integration with WMS and using PIC priority, being able to have a logical PIC path through the warehouse facility uh, is all built into the software. Another great feature because in manufacturing and import, whether you're food service or otherwise, uh, being able to include certain bins within inventory availability. Many of the organizations need to go through a QC and testing process uh, to be able to validate or label um, a product before they put it away and do those inspections. Being able to do that is important, but yet uh, let your customer service team, let your inventory management team know whether or not that's available is a, is a key thing. And do we want to allow sales against that particular location ID or not? Um, and if you scroll along here, uh, relative to how you manage and track costs, at the individual warehouse level and at the individual location level. Uh, these are all uh, key components to really a, a successful uh, use of a, of a good inventory management system without having to go to a third party. Also being able to maintain carts or shelf locations as well as physical locations within the warehouse. And as you can see, uh, the GL interaction right down to the financials from a, an inventory management perspective, having multiple warehouses and being able to track that right down into your financial statements um, is of critical importance, especially when you have varying costs by, by warehouse location um, and transfer costs and other things like that. Um, so I thought that this would be a good perspective to show you some depth. We're gonna do that as we look at some of the core transactions, take a little journey into some of the underlying tables so you can see uh, you know, the depth of the solution overall. Turning our attention back into here, one of the other key things I like to focus on is a function called replenishment. This is an advanced concept, right? So, you know, being able to reorder up to the minimum um, is, is, no, is no great shakes, right, by, by today's standard. But being able to have a more thorough replenishment cycle in place, and I'm just gonna scroll over to my main wholesale warehouse here. 
and being able to say only suggested items that need to be replenished, or I can look at all items and being able to visualize this data, being able to export this information, being able to uh, filter this information so that we can get the listing of data on our terms as a user. It doesn't really matter how the developer may have uh, created the software to, in terms of gaining access to the software. Throughout every grid that exists within the system, you have the capability of looking at uh, all the different options of uh, data elements that may be available to you and what makes sense for you to have within your visualization. And if you just look at the scope of this inventory file, right, being able to look at issues and receipts and what's on order and if the PO is in preparation state or not uh, because there may be workflow that's involved. Uh, so it's the nuances of the processing that really make this a very robust ERP. And right? having PO on order is one thing, but maybe I have something in preparation, it's not quite released, it's going through a, an approval process or an internal workflow process. Well, my demand planning team really needs to be aware of that. And this is an, a perfect example of the level of depth that you can expect within the inventory management uh, of Acumatica. And of course, then being able to process this data and create purchase orders are all a natural byproduct of that. Additionally, you're gonna take a quick look in uh, what we'll call order processing. And uh, I'll focus here on, on placing a more traditional order through the software. And then we'll look at how we can view these orders. Right, so notice there's a multitude of different order types, right? Not just taking a sales order, but maybe I have a field service sales order or a commerce sales order or a traditional you know, entered sales order, or one that's created by a salesperson, uh, what's the significance of this? Being able to create unique workflow experience based upon these order types, not only having numerical control over these various order types natively, but also being able to control behaviors within the software behind the scenes of these order types are really important. Uh, also other key features, being able to you know, do a look up and type ahead uh, style in inquiries here. Um, notations that can be delivered, right? To be able to get uh, the information delivered to the point of entry that you need when you need it, making sure that the user entry is, is consistent and controlled. Right? Being able to associate any transaction to a project, being able to tag an order with some descriptive information. And then of course, being able to uh, process sales transactions uh, quickly and efficiently. Those are the key things that we really want to focus on here today. The other thing I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to jump out of here real quick, is how we view our information. So one of the key things that we focus on is finding data. They've done a tremendous job with this search. So I looked at ABC before, and now I'm going to look at ABC's transactions and profiles. And I have a customer that's named ABC, and I have a supplier and I have transactions that may have that reference in there. So being able to drill in right from here, being able to do this kind of wildcard search is key and being able to bring up that customer record is uh, with, with ease. I, I can do this for invoices. I can do this for purchase orders. I can do this for even something like, hey, I want to be able to put in an invoice and I just don't know how. Right here to the menu items taking me right to invoices. So it's intuitive. And, and, and pretty easy to use. And now, so I've got a list of invoices. And what's nice about this is I can get a list of most anything. We saw before a list of uh, locations within a warehouse. Here is a list of invoices uh, that I have that maybe have different types or different status. So maybe I wanna look at something that's maybe called uh, just open invoices. And be able to view that and then be able to drill in and take a look at that open invoice. And then once you have this information presented, uh, certainly how you organize your data and how you're viewing this data is up to you. Drag and drop technology throughout the software. This is all sticky, by the way, being able to have those same column level controls that we had before. Um, so that you can drill in here and say, you know what, this is important to me. I, I care about lot-based or serial numbers, or I don't care about lot-based or serial numbers. I can define my user experience as I see fit, and it will retain this information. Having the ability 
to um, also drill down from within this record is uh, commonplace. So anytime you see a hyperlink like this, I can drill into it quickly and easily. Scrolling through records is also quite easy to do. But the key thing when we go back to this list, and if I'm looking at sales orders, right, is being able to view these lists on my terms. How do I want to be able to see this information? Again, controlling over these columns is one thing. But being able to filter in here is another, right? So anything that I want to, I can save. I'm using this illustratively, where I can now save this. That's shared with everybody. Okay. This now becomes available to me. You think about the power of doing this all across the entire spectrum of the software, where I can focus in on my particular records. I can focus in on just the ABC studio orders. I can sort ascending or descending by any one of the column values that I choose. Um, and I can, of course, have a complete drill through uh, in this process. I go a little bit further. Beyond this, the software permits us to do either one-off processes, some businesses like that. I take a sales order, I process a transaction, I'll pull up an open sales order and give you an example of what I'm talking about. And in this scenario, I can come into here and I could say, what's my next action, right? I can create a shipment from here. I can uh, prepare an invoice from here. I have a variety of options that are available to me. But anything that you can do through the actual transaction, you can also do as a bulk process. So for instance, if I want to look at my open orders and suggest that I now want to get ready and process my shipments, I can come to here and I could say, I want to create a shipment. Here's my new orders. These are some I put in earlier today in preparation. And I may want to filter this based upon my ship via or carrier. And I want to do this in bulk. I can record this and say process shipment in bulk. So I can have done it on a one-off process or I can do it in bulk. And most every process, whether I'm preparing purchase orders, whether I'm generating shipments, whether I'm posting invoice transactions, I have the ability to do that as a bulk process or individually. But here's the key thing. I may want to do this on an automated basis. I don't want to have to take the time to necessarily do this. So the key thing here is I want to add a new automation process, creating an automation schedule. And I may say UPS processing. It means I want to pick, pack, and ship only my UPS orders. And all I would have had to have done in that scenario is change my carrier. And what I'm going to do here is I can say, what is the schedule of events? And I want to do this on a daily basis. And I want to start it at a particular time. So I know I want to pick, process, and ship my UPS transactions at 10 AM uh, every morning. I can set my schedule that that's going to be a daily event. I can do it weekly. I can do it really in any frequency I want. And even picking the specific days of the week. So if I was going to do a particular action on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or perhaps create a scenario where orders that are going to be for certain customers in certain zones or areas, your imagination can take hold here, take hold here and see how you can create these various automation schedules um, and, and then define the conditions and define filter values. Right? What are the dates of shipment? And it, well, interactively, it knows. Right? And what's my carrier if I want to define that here? And now I can save and close this process and this will run on the appointed day. Every one of these bulk processes has this scheduling capability throughout the software. And to give an example, I don't want to dwell too much on, on, on sales order management, but to think about the depth of the software as it relates to uh, purchasing and payables, kind of standard things that one would expect in every system, but having a module dedicated to time and expense management, having a module dedicated to equipment uh, management. So if you're doing installations out in the field, and there's warranty work that needs to be billed for, 
uh, that's all a comprehensive part of, of the whole process. And of course, would be incomplete if we did not focus more on some dashboards. So we were looking at the distribution flow, but the entire system is roles based. So that whether you're a CRM user or a support manager, or you're a controller concerned with financial processing or a warehouse manager, you're gonna have the delivery of content and information based upon your role. And through these tiles and widgets um, and creation of dashboards and the integration of other list views through this process, those very same list views that we showed you earlier, where we're looking at the listing of sales orders can all be incorporated into this screen as can Power BI visualizations as well through that integration that we've talked about. So now being able to look at perhaps overdue customers and being able to now drill down into this visualization that's now becoming familiar to you where I have complete control over what I'm looking at, what are the columns of information um, and can configure my experience the way I, I need to. So I can be looking at all records or just overview, or let me just look at some of the worst offenders and being able to then focus in and looking at what the individual details are that comprise that. So if we're gonna get over to, let's say ABC Studios, our good friend here. And take us right into the customer master. And I'm gonna go through customer file. I wanna show you some data around the item file um, and don't wanna overload, uh, but I think there are certain attributes to, to look at here that uh, I will, give you a sense of the scope and capabilities of, of the software solution itself. So first thing I wanna talk about is the ability to have integrated reports uh, about this customer, whether it's an age past due or an age uh, outstanding report. Having the ability to certainly email and generate PDFs. Again, all of this can be done on an automated or timed basis if, if need be. Uh, so these reports can be generated when you want to, to whom you want, uh, based upon varying conditions. Um, so these configurations and building up these kinds of advanced workflows effectively enable you to communicate more efficiently with your clients without you having to take a physical action to make that happen. Come back into this customer master file again and take a quick look. Also, uh, knowing that data security and privacy is important, right? Does a customer consent uh, to uh, using of, of personal information, credit card information can be maintained on file. It is all PCI compliant. Um, having uh, obviously multiple billing and, and uh, shipping addresses is one thing, but also having the ability to control how you're communicating with your, with your clients. Are you sending invoices by email? Are you physically printing? Are you doing one or the other or both? You have that capability to control that. And then of course there's, there's settings in here that enable us to control who's getting that information uh, within the organization, and even if it's multiple people within the organization, that will be managed through here, through what we'll call the delivery settings for uh, certainly uh, pick, pack, and ship, uh, and maintaining addresses, looking at the multiple locations that may be on file, and the depth of the files. When we're looking at a particular location code, that location conceivably having um, obviously separate name information, but being able to attach separate notes and separate files um, are all part of this, the, the overall solution. Next thing I wanted to show is about payment methods. Integrated payment processing is built in, credit card management is built into the software. Um, we, can, we certainly can help you configure that. And because it is a full CRM solution, uh, not just having a contact record, but having uh, a very well-formed contact record living underneath the customer file is, is a key element. And so while a lot of organizations have Salesforce or Microsoft CRM in play, and we talked previously about the integrations that exist, uh, potentially using this as your single unified database that com com comprises both uh, sales activities as well as all of the pre-sale activities that may take place. And beyond that, being able to keep track of whatever additional information about that client, being able to store attributes about the client that are relevant to your particular industry, uh, being able to monitor activities and managing activities, whether they're emails or events or tasks, all being fully integrated into here. Um, complete opportunity management and case management are all built into the software as well. And that's done at both the customer level and at the contact level. Um, I'll just focus in on activities real quick. 
because one of the things I wanted to show you here, while we didn't have activity set at the contact level on this record, I wanted to show you that there are in fact activities uh, with all of the emails, some that I had processed earlier today and taking some sales transactions and being able to drill back right into that originating email. It's pretty, pretty impressive. So what I'm going to do is one last thing. I'm going to go back into sales transactions again and open up sales orders. I'll grab one that has some line items here. Right, this is uh, one that purchased uh, some CBD oil from an organization just recently jumped on board with, with, with Acumatica. And uh, I wanna quickly take a, a look into the inventory master database uh, that sits underneath this particular transaction. So one of the key things to focus on here is the fact that we can effectively track lot and serial numbers within the inventory management software um, and uh, costing at that particular level. So if we think about the valuation method, obviously it's specific to the lot of serial number, but it also supports on an item by item basis, standard, average, and FIFO costing methods, and that can all be controlled uh, at, the, at the item level. Uh, you also have the capability of selling in multiple units of measure and having these different purchasing units of measure and selling units of measure, as well as your base unit of measure with a conversion uh, table um, to support that. So therefore all of the costing is, is calculated properly, all of the sell pricing is calculated properly, um, can all be managed through the application. Um, commission management is tied into the software, um, as is uh, being able to control price classes at, at various levels. Again, I don't wanna to go too deep into a discussion on, on pricing because we could spend 20 minutes doing that, but suffice to say, you can do customer by item, by price class, um, and, and have different uplifts and, and changes in pricing. Where is this uh, inventory located? Who are the vendors that we buy it from? Are there any cross references? Perhaps my customer has a different item schema than I do and we want to maintain a translation, perhaps my vendor has a different schema than I do, being able to manage and maintain these cross-references are important. Also having complete packaging information um, to be stored within the application. There's an integrated UPS and FedEx capability that's going to leverage this technology, um, as well as the ability to do a complete pack out on our uh, shipping and fulfillment, where it can actually allow us to pack up cartons or it can do an auto pack feature um, so some, some great capability there. Um, also being able to set up replenishment information or service information about that item. And if I focus in on attributes, being able to look at things uh, such as cataloging, especially useful for web-based uh, capabilities. So if I want to use this as a singular repository to manage my e-commerce uh, business um, or for other types of reporting, being able to create this hierarchical structure within my database uh, to help me manage how I'm looking at my analytics. This can have a financial reporting implication or this can have a, just a top level sales analysis implication. So you can see um, you know, very robust uh, capabilities throughout the software. We'd certainly be excited to uh, share with you some more information uh, uh, about the Acumatica solution and really give you a personalized tour and, and demonstration uh, of the software. Um, but you know, for now, I think this gives us a a good view and perspective uh, on the uh, on the overall solution. So I just want to take a moment to thank uh, everybody for joining us today. Um, I do hope that you've enjoyed uh, the session and that you found some value. And uh, if well, we could be of any service to you, please do not hesitate to reach out and, and, and share your thoughts. Okay, thanks everybody. Hope you enjoyed your lunch and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great day. <clears throat>